Michigan football 1985, the season of the team. The University of Michigan Wolverines entered the 1985 football season as an unknown quantity. Coming off a very disappointing 6-6 six six year in 84, nobody paid much attention to Michigan, and some even predicted a second division finish in the Big Ten. But head coach Bo Schembecker, his coaches, and players knew that this was no ordinary football team. They were a group dedicated to playing together, working hard, and winning. In their minds, this team would prove the experts wrong. This team would win. It wouldn't be easy. The non-conference schedule included football powers Notre Dame, South Carolina, and preseason number one ranked Maryland. This team accepted the challenge, and those three football powers fell. First came Notre Dame, and on national television, the Wolverines roared back from a 9-3 halftime deficit to win it 20-12. But you've got to give all the credit in the world to big number 66. Boy, he has done a job here in crucial situations. He has broken through and made two or three crucial sacks on goal line. Here's White. Touchdown. Fourth and 16. They can get a first down and not score. They don't have to get to the end zone. Penalty flag, interception by Michigan. But there is a penalty flag. Holding, no, nope, it's against the Irish. So the interception by Doug Mallory stands. Well, I'm just happy. I don't think it's totally hit me yet, but I just feel great for this team and great for the coaching staff and, and Bo and Coach Hanlon because uh, I know what last year's season did to them. You know, the time that they put in as coaches and for us to you know, to do it, do their game plan and win has got to be a great thrill for them and us, too. I'm just, I'm happy. Next, it was to South Carolina. The Gamecocks were unbeaten in two straight, but once again, a national television audience saw the Wolverines put the clamps on Carolina, marching to a 34-3 victory. Bob Perryman is in at fullback, number 37. And they are. Our ball will throw it. Gets his pass away, going deep with it. It's good. And good all the way down to the 16-yard line to Paul Jokic. On second down and goal from the six, Harbaugh options around the corner, gets loose on the corner, touchdown! Now there's three tight ends in there, and with Morris at tailback, Harbaugh options goes to Morris, and he's got it. Jamie Morris outruns the pursuit and takes it into the end zone, losing a shoe in the process. Michigan, like one. Yeah, Michigan defense continues to just whip the offensive line of South Carolina, which are all new players this year, all seniors last year graduated. Got to get a little deeper. Run that option stuff. There's your problem right there. And Michigan falls on the football, and it's first down Wolverines down around the South Carolina 30. Every single guy here is so vitally important to what we're doing. I don't want anybody to jeopardize it. Other teams are having problems. That's the reason that we can beat him. We don't want any. Everybody take care of himself. He lives clean. He comes to play every day in practice to get better and better. Believe in one another. Battle. We got some guys hurt. Other guys came off the bench, went into the job. That's the way it's got to be. Everybody working together. We got the greatest leadership I've ever had. And I want the next nine games to prove that. Let's go. This is the greatest leadership I've ever had. Right? Let's go. Then came the big test, Maryland. But once again, this Michigan team was ready, and Maryland fell 20 to nothing. The Wolverines throttled the high-powered Terrapin offense. It was the only time all season Maryland was shut out, and they averaged better than 26 points a game the rest of the year. But against Michigan, they came up empty, time after time. On offense, the Wolverines took advantage of the Terrapin mistakes, and it was the game that introduced the Jim Harbaugh to Eric Caddis connection. The Wolverines' big tight end caught a pair of touchdown passes, and the Wolverines roared on with their 20 to nothing whitewash.
Well, it's just a great overall team effort. I mean, everybody played well. The defense, the offense, it's a great win. And we're 3-0 going into the conference and really happy. Bob, well, just real pleased that the team played as well as we're doing. Um, we were under, or we were, came in the game uh, underranked. People, people are going to start respecting Michigan now. We've beaten three highly ranked teams. We're going to be ready for the conference. Entering the conference schedule, Michigan no longer was an unknown quantity. They were for real and ranked in the nation's top ten and the defense still had not allowed a touchdown. Wisconsin was the first Big Ten team to find out just how real Michigan was, and the Badgers left town as believers, bowing to the Wolverines 33-6. Michigan with two uh, tight ends in there. Over the middle, Caddis touchdown! All of a sudden, the big tight end breaks out on a one-on-one, -on -one, and Caddis beat his man in the end zone, a little lob pass from Howbaugh, covering 11 yards, and Michigan has struck with the first touchdown of the afternoon. Second and nine. Intercepted by Rivers. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown! Carlin Rivers. Well, we was in like a two-deep coverage, and I was supposed to jam and get back to the hole. So I got back, and I read the quarterback, and just threw it, and I was there. So I grabbed the ball, and then I, tried, I made a move inside, I got hit by one of my players, and then I bounced back. And then, soon I took another step, one of the Wisconsin players came at my legs and I juked it. And then I went back outside, and that was it. And it felt so good. <laughs> Michigan State was next on the agenda, and again, a national television audience would witness a furious five minutes of football from the opening gun that set the tone of the day. Michigan has it. And those are the turnovers era that so often decide these type games. Arbaugh on the third and three. Hits Caddis. Touchdown. Gary Campbell back for this punt. Greg Montgomery will punt it for Michigan State. He's the transfer from Penn State, and he's been superb. Big rush. It's blocked. And it's going to be covered in the end zone. Touchdown. Dieter Heron blocked it. The Spartans' great running back, Lorenzo White, was held in check by the tremendous Wolverine defense. White gained a season-low 47 yards on 18 carries, and the Michigan team roared to a 31-0 victory. We went into this game knowing that uh, we were facing one of the best backs in the country and all we had to do was contain, contain him and McAllister. And uh, we did uh, most of the day, got out a couple times and uh, I blew one long one, <laughs> didn't uh, play the ball well, but other than that, the defense played like we thought we were going to and uh, that, uh, we knew we were gonna do it. <laughs> the showdown between number two ranked Michigan and number one ranked Iowa was next. In Iowa City, the defense continued its incredible play. Heisman runner-up Chuck Long couldn't manage a touchdown against the Wolverines in a tremendous struggle. Once again, a national television audience watched as Michigan scored the only touchdown of the game in the first half. Harbaugh to put it up. Dross pursues him out of the pocket. He gets around, underhands it to White. White throws for the end zone. He's got the touchdown. After Iowa had taken the lead 9-7 in the fourth quarter, the Wolverines stormed back. Bob Perryman in at fullback. Harbaugh hands it to him, straight ahead in a big hole. So they send the short men. One of the things when you play Michigan, you can never forget the fullback because Schimbeckler will shove him down your throat. White replaces Perryman. And they'll run Jamie Morris up the middle. Daylight trying to split the safeties. And they haul him down inside the 20-yard line. That's as big a play as we've seen here this afternoon. It's long enough and it's good. The Wolverines lead 10-9. 10.55 to go. And one and two still raging at each other in Iowa City. But Iowa got close enough in the final seconds, and the Wolverines had to wait and watch as Rob Hotland tried to win it for the Hawkeyes. 
Here he is attempting a 29-yarder, which would beat Michigan. It's on its way, and it's good. Well, it, it uh, brings us back down to earth. Um, it's gonna it's gonna get us jacked up to play uh, Indiana. Um, I think uh, that it's it's gonna hurt the team a little bit, but we're gonna bounce back emotionally. Definitely, it's gonna bring us closer as a team. We're all together. We know what we have to do to win, and we're gonna win the rest of them. The 12-10 loss at Iowa was still bothering Michigan the next week when they entertained Indiana, and the Hoosiers took advantage. They scored 15 first-half points, the most anyone had scored in a complete game against Michigan so far. At halftime, it was a 15-15 game. It didn't stay that way long, though, as the Wolverines exploded in the second half and Indiana went down 42-15. to Harbaugh back to throw over the middle. It goes! Catalyst! Five balls! Touchdown, Michigan! They have the eye formation. Ends are tight. Bradley sliding down. He's being hit! surrounded by his teammates on a big, big defensive play. Pitch back to White. That's a running row, 15, 10, 5. Came back, we had a slow start in the first half, came back in the second half and said we're going to shut them down, and that's what we did. We got dedicated, so we're going to shut this team down, and our offense did the job in the second half. On the road to Illinois went Michigan the next week, and again, the defense dominated. The high-powered offense of Jack Trudeau and company couldn't cross the goal line either as the Wolverines' team defense swarmed and stopped the Illini. The Wolverines' offense was sluggish, too, and they could only manage three points on a Mike Gillette field goal. And just like at Iowa two weeks earlier, Illinois had a chance to win it late on a field goal, but this never-say-die defense did the job again. Dieter Heron got a piece of the kick and it hit the crossbar and fell back onto the field. No good. The game ended in a 3 3 tie. I came through clean and I luckily tipped a bit of it. And I watched that ball sail and I wasn't sure if it was going to make it or if it bounced short. And luckily it just hit short enough that preserved the tie. And I'll say one thing for our defense they never quit. I mean, I mean here we are. We're, we're, we got blocked at that field goal for a tie. And, uh, and they rise to the occasion. You got to give them credit. They're a, they're a tenacious bunch. I'm not happy about the tie, but it keeps us in the race. And, and we're still fighting for the Big Ten championship, and, and we're not going to let, let up one bit. From that point on, the Wolverines were unstoppable. The tie seemed to push them into a higher gear, and Purdue couldn't keep pace the next week as the Wolverines pounded the Boilermakers on both sides of the ball on their way to a crushing 47-0 victory. Griffin split to the right. Over the middle it goes. Deflected. Intercepted. Red Cochran made the interception following the tip. And the Wolverines will take over on their own 45-yard line. Ball back at the 9-yard line now as a result of the penalty. Harbaugh back to throw. Throws long. Straight back to throw, being rushed, backs off, he's hit it, back to the loss, back at the 8-yard line. Mark Mester finally wrapped him up after Hammerstein hit him initially. Michigan comes to the line of scrimmage with Colazar wide to the right. Harbaugh unloads, Colazar got it! Touchdown! Everett under the center, has a flanker wide to the right, being chased back. Colazar wide to the right. Jokic split to the left. This is the short side. Harbaugh back to throw on third down. He's Kobe. throwing long. He's got Colazar. He's got the middle. And they go the 20 to 10. Touchdown, Michigan. The Wolverines have the ball back now. They're on 35. We still have 647 left. This is Webb. He's got a hole. Breaks into the free. The race is on.
we're a team and uh, we're going to try and play like a team out there and uh, we're coming back. We're, we're on our way back. In Minneapolis the following week, the Golden Gophers tried their hand but came up empty as the Wolverines roared out to a 31-0 halftime lead as they dominated in every phase of the game. back of the 16-yard line. Up across the 30. Still on his feet. Oh, the 40. There he goes. He it's is all gone. over. When the dust settled in the Metrodome, Michigan was 8-1-1 one one in the year with a 48-7 win, and the big one with Ohio State was next. Once again, a national television audience was witness to the Michigan team's excellence on both sides of the ball. Ohio State took a 10-3 lead late in the second quarter. But from that point on, it was all Michigan as the team began to take control. Straight down the middle to Caddis. He's all alone inside the 20. What a beautiful job of looking off a target. Harbaugh did that time. He forced the secondary away from Caddis, and it's a 40-yard gain. Harbaugh bobbles the snap. Comes back, throws, touchdown, Michigan. Jim Harbaugh was brilliant over the last three games of the year. In those games, he was 41 of 50 through the air for 706 yards and nine touchdowns. He became the nation's pass efficiency leader, and he was never better than against Ohio State in the fourth quarter. The Buckeyes had pulled to within three points on a desperation fourth down pass, but on the Wolverines' next possession, Harbaugh had the answer. Rover on the blitz. He's open. Colasar. He will go the distance. They won't catch him. With that one safely in the end zone, it was time for the defense to close the door. And a throw. Under pressure from Scarcelli. Ball is loose. He was surrounded at the 45-yard line. Michigan will take over. As you know, a lot of seniors, it's the last time they're ever going to play in the stadium again. And uh, this is a big win for Bowl too, because you know this is a team that was, wasn't was supposed to be any good. They're the team that was supposed to be number 60. They're the team that was supposed to be number 8, finish 8 in the Big Ten. But, uh, you know, I don't know what the score is at the Iowa, but uh, you know, this team proved that they can play with anybody in the country. Day one, when I was being recruited by uh, the coach that was now head coach of Colorado, Bill McCartney and Coach Schembecker, they're in my house. And they asked me, you know, what it meant to me to come to Michigan. And I said, you know, if I never play, as long as I get to play, in the Michigan Ohio State game, my senior year, that's what it's all about. And today, I, you know, I became a part of that. It just goes on down the line from Coach Schembeck. You know, he's he's the best coach in America, and he's a quality guy. And he only recruits quality players and quality people. And, you know, it's just an honor being recruited by Michigan and being able to come here. And I think that carries over, and we showed it this year, the type of guys that are on this team. And, you know, they, you know I think it, it shows that every year. You know, last year was just, I think last year may have been a fluke, and this year we came out and showed everyone what it really is, what Michigan's all about. I live in Michigan football, and I followed it, and I always wanted to be here. And uh, I always wanted to play college football, and it was my dream. And it came true. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sad. I'm going to miss this place a lot. <laughs>
The 27-17 win over Ohio State completed a 9-1-1 regular season for Michigan. This overlooked team had caught the attention of everyone, and there was one more left to win. The team had a date in Tempe, Arizona at the Fiesta Bowl against Nebraska on New Year's Day. The first half went poorly for Michigan in the Fiesta Bowl. They didn't appear sharp on offense or defense. The Cornhuskers were a top five team, and they were doing things that very few people were able to do all season against Michigan. At halftime, it didn't look good as the Huskers held a 14-3 lead. But as halftime ceremonies went on, the team was gearing up. This team was about ready to display the character that had taken them from unknowns to national powers. What the national television audience and a record-breaking crowd witnessed in the third quarter was a Michigan explosion of dominance over a great Nebraska team. Lipstrom in motion, and it's a draw. And DeBose a fumble. Michigan has it at the 20-yard line. First turnover of the ball game. And uh, Colazar comes in as a wide receiver. The game is to Morris. 2 running backs. And it is wide. Touchdown, Michigan. And now the momentum is shifting towards Michigan. Second and 15. Hicks is back in the secondary for Michigan. Another fumble. And Michigan has it. Moeller and Mesner were going for it. And Mark Mesner has it. No gain. Second down and 10. And here's Jamie Morris. Slips a tackle. Cuts back. First down. Colazar in motion. Gerald White. White to the five. Dives. Did they say? Did he make it? No, they're going to mark, I think, just short. Perryman and White are the running backs. Two tight ends. They show motion. And the option. Fake of the pitch. Harbaugh dives. Did he make it? Yes. The ball just has to break the play. The official said that he made it. Touchdown. Michigan for Jim Harbaugh. Dan Wingard was the punter. Number 15. David Arnold blocked it. And he and Ed Hood were scrambling for it. And they now, got it at the six. Now watch, watch the receiver from the outside. Now watch him lay out and time it perfectly. Number 15 timed it perfectly. And that's what most punt blockers don't do. They get a little too close to the kicker. This time it's the fake to the second back through. And the quarterback keeps fumbles. The ball is loose. And Michigan will have as Ivan Hicks comes up with a recovery. But Jamie Morris now back in the ballgame. And Morris jumps to the outside and goes to the three-yard line. 14 yards for Jamie Morris. Second down, goal to go on the option. Harbaugh leads, he's got it. Harbaugh scores his second touchdown. The 24-point explosion put the Wolverines comfortably ahead, but it wasn't over. Nebraska came back and got to within four points in the closing seconds. The Huskers had the ball and a chance to win, but the team and its defense once again rose to the occasion. The inability of Taylor to get out of bounds to play before the last cost Nebraska 27 seconds. There's a delayed play action. He's got to throw it. Unleash it. Goes E. Boy, what an arm. He overthrows it. Intercepted in the end zone. We got together just as the players and said we've got to play for our seniors and for our coach. Coach wanted this game because he knew he had the, the, the motivation and the, and the team morale to do it this year. And we went out and we decided we were going to do it and we did it. I'm really tired right now. I'm just really tired. But, you know, in a while I know it's going to hit. And, man, this is, I mean, 10-1-1. I mean, can't hardly get any better than that. I'm just overjoyed. I can't even speak right. I can't even say that. I mean, I, I mean, this is, this is Michigan football, man. This is what I came here for. This is it. You know? Winning, too. This is it. This is it. With no bowl record. Forget bowls, bowl record. This is now. This is the 80s. This is the team of the 80s. We're going all the way next year. Hey. The Wolverines finished at 10-1-1 on the year with a Fiesta Bowl title and a number two ranking in the final national bowl. It was the season of the team. It was a season for winners. It was a Michigan season.